In 418 nights, we are going to be celebrating the start of the new millennium, but we'll also be confronted with the problem some experts think could bring chaos around the world. Y2K, it's called. It's a date related to computer glitch that'll hit when the year rolls over to a double zero. New Center Force Anthony Moore reports we will all be affected. So you say you don't own a PC. Y2K doesn't concern you. Think again. Computers run just about every aspect of your life. Communication, power, business, banking, manufacturing, transportation, distribution. Computer chips are embedded in medical devices, utility lines, automobiles, phones, elevators, planes, industrial equipment, consumer electronics. So experts emphasize something with a Y2K glitch will affect you. Every man, woman, and child in, in the Western world and uh, elsewhere is going to notice this event. Computer consultant Peter Diager first alerted the world to Y2K five years ago in an article he titled Doomsday 2000. This is real. Organizations are spending hundreds of millions of dollars because they've found problems. And anybody who says otherwise just hasn't looked at the facts. PG&E is spending $235 million to fix their gas and electric grid. Ford is spending $375 million to fix plant equipment and business systems. The Pentagon is spending a billion to fix military computers and weapon systems. How bad will it be? Some analysts contend it could seriously disrupt everyday services. Some economists say it will spur a global recession. And extremists believe it will cause the collapse of modern civilization. How could something seemingly so innocuous as a date do all that? It's because many computer programs store the year just as we write it, with two digits. We've seen the software, we've looked at the software, the date problem is real. So show me what... At the computer company Reasoning, Tim Cho used a low-tech whiteboard to show us how, in 2000, calculating with two-digit year dates code. can cause a heap of problems. Well, I'd say zero, zero, and I'd subtract 98 in the computer program, and what would that equal? Well, that equals minus 98. Even though we know the real answer should be two. Your employer could miscalculate how much you work and short your paycheck. Cockpit navigation equipment, which relies on time and date to determine distance, could miscalculate where airplanes are. Banks could miscalculate how long it's been since you paid your mortgage and issue a notice to foreclose. Date is used in so many different ways that I don't think all of us can actually imagine all the different ways date has been used. There's a problem with the actual program. It's real at PG&E. They've identified 30,000 mission critical systems. Systems they must fix before 2000 or your power will go off. For example, a metal cabinet full of circuit boards, which is the utility's central data network. It's like a freeway. It's the main corridor of communications for our systems. And if it for doesn't work, what happens to the electricity and the gas? The electricity and the gas could go away because we don't have means to monitor the system. At SF General Hospital, they've learned the fire control system needs a software upgrade or it won't properly record fire alarms. And the emergency power generator, which keeps operating rooms and ICUs working in a crisis, needs a fix too. It's old, it's been around for a long time, and as we installed new, we didn't go completely to PC-based for that reason. Everything here can work without a head end. It can work as an old style boiler. And the hospital's buying stacks of new desktop computers to put on the hospital wards. These are the central monitors for all the patients on this unit. So um, uh, I know they won't crash as we've tested them and they're, and they're year 2000 compliant, but if a system like this one, let's say two generations old was to crash, your nurse wouldn't know the information on the patient that was sitting in the bedside. So you say you don't have a computer? Don't bet you can't catch the Y2K bug anyway. An analysis by the Gartner Group presented to the U.S. Senate recently predicted banking and finance will emerge largely unscathed. But they estimate that two-thirds of all hospitals, government agencies, and power and transportation companies will have a mission-critical failure. Failures which could cause considerable loss of revenue, business shutdown, or worse. None of us actually really know how dependent we are. And I think we'll all discover on January the 1st and subsequent months just how dependent we are on technology. In Mountain View, Anthony Moore, New Center 4, on the Night Beat.
Analysts say the price tag for fixing the bug worldwide could reach $1 trillion. Tomorrow night at 11, Anthony looks at the different ways Y2K could affect your life. It seems like such a tiny thing, but is Y2K the beginning of the end? Business and government is spending hundreds of billions of dollars to fix a little glitch caused by the way computers store the year with two digits instead of four. And some contend computer crashes could spark the end of the world as we know it. Well, tonight, Anthony Moore explains most experts believe every person in the modern world will notice Y2K, but it won't be anything like a doomsday. Nice little short pass to Thorne. Joe put the puck to the net. The doomsday Robin scenario nice starts the when the power stops. <laughs> State-sensitive computer chips embedded in electric transformers malfunction. Monitoring and switching software at utility command centers crashes, and the lights begin to go dark. Then the telecommunications network fails. Date-sensitive stoplights switch off. Computerized air traffic control malfunctions. Jumbo jets fly blind. Some crash. Computer-controlled ATMs close. Regional power outages cascade into a global blackout. World financial markets tumble. Panicked investors run on banks. Panicked citizens strip store shelves. <coughs> Fleeing traffic clogs roads. Food distribution collapses. Riots break out. Government breaks down. Anarchy reigns. For these days that are just months away, been foreseen by men from a long time ago. Some religious leaders and militia groups are already calling Y2K the biblical Armageddon. Survivalist followers are stockpiling supplies. It's not just the religious and right-wing fringe who are gearing up for doomsday. Here in the California desert, 30 miles from the nearest interstate, is the year 2000 retreat of a Stanford PhD in engineering and economic systems. If Y2K were really bad, we'd want to see people before they saw us. Scott Olmsted is a computer software engineer, but today he's walking the fence line he just put up on his new Y2K refuge. We bought it, uh, a place of the well because if the power goes off for a long time, uh, there might be problems with water. We did want a place that we could have a garden if we uh, had to stay here for quite a while. How would you describe yourself? I'm a prudent guy. I'm a guy who buys insurance. I'm spending uh, maybe a little less than 10% of my net worth to uh, have some extra insurance, a place to go if things really got bad. I'm only given about a 1% chance to things really going really bad, but uh, that's enough for me to buy some insurance. When Olmsted says bad, he doesn't mean doomsday. He says his place won't protect his family from what computer buffs call Teo Tawaki, the end of the world as we know it. Said you're going to buy a gun. Yeah, uh, we already have one, and we'll probably get another one just to have two. Instead, Olmsted is planning for an Indonesian style depression, a one in a hundred chance he thinks there'll be riots, looting, an 80% drop in the U.S. gross domestic product. The doomsday stories are ghost stories. But even the person who first alerted the world to Y2K in a 1993 article titled Doomsday doesn't believe the apocalyptic scenarios will happen. We are going to compromise on quality, on security, on levels of service. But the necessities of, the necessities of life will continue. Olmsted and others contend Y2K could knock out the fundamental infrastructure that holds our society together. Power, telecommunications, banking, and transportation. However, a recent electric industry study expressed cautious optimism the impact of Y2K on the power grid would be minimal. They don't have an embedded chip in them. They, At PG&E, for example, technicians found many systems so like this voltage meter are computer simply computer so computer old computer they can't be affected. It doesn't have any electronics, there's no computer associated with it. Still, PG&E's Y2K project manager likens Y2K to an El Nino storm coming in from offshore. There are no guarantees. Um, there are so many things um, in a storm situation, in the year 2000 situation, that are outside of our control, that the name of the game in the utility business is putting things in place to, to insulate your, yourself from those risks as much as possible. 
The banking and financial sector is the widely acknowledged leader in fixing the bug. Still, an association leader cautions there will be glitches. Reasonably prepared consumer at the end of the year may want to have a little cash on hand. But to take money out and put it away in a can somewhere is really kind of foolish. And a telecommunications industry representative contends at worst, your bill may arrive late. Almost with 100% certainty, you're not going to see an interruption in service. Boeing says its planes will fly fine, and the FAA is assuring Congress U.S. air traffic control will be able to track planes. But the Dutch airline KLM says it may ground part of its fleet out of concern some airports around the globe won't be ready. I would rather be doing other things than working on this. Scott Olmsted says he won't spend New Year's Eve in his hideaway. He'll only come here if society starts to fall apart. And if Y2K's a bust, he figures he can sell his land, freeze-dried food and generator, and maybe make a profit. I decided I just don't want to have to barricade myself in the house and wonder when they're coming for me. In Riverside County, Anthony Moore, News Center 4, on the night beat. Experts have told Congress they expect the U.S. to escape with limited localized power outages, some business failures, widespread inconvenience for everyone, as the rest of the world, a prognosis is less reassuring. Some analysts predict civil unrest or worse.